Captain Pitta. Oh! <laughs> The truth of the matter is, no matter how good of a striker you are, have to be comfortable with the fact that a drunk guy can knock you out and drop you like a sack of potatoes. Hey guys, Nick here. Happy 2020. Welcome to the channel. If you don't know who I am, I am an amateur boxing coach, a BJJ purple belt, and a former professional wrestler. And I love martial arts and combat sports. So this is my first video of the year, and I thought we take the opportunity to teach a valuable lesson based on a trending topic that I'm always late on. <sighs> I can't believe I'm actually starting the year off. Uh, doing a video about Jake Paul. Well, the time's better now because uh, there's a few less hot heads and people can think more clearly about it. So, the truth of the matter is, no matter how good of a striker you are, if you are willing to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with somebody and swing hands, you have to be comfortable with the fact that a drunk guy can knock you out and drop you like a sack of potatoes. A bit late to tell BJ Penn that. Now I know this would upset some of you, but let me just clarify. What do I mean by this? What I mean is, is that you have to get comfortable with the fact that it only takes one mistake to drop you. It takes one mistake not to see that punch coming. Being the best does not mean that you cannot make mistakes. Of course it lowers the chances, but there are several factors to consider here. When it comes to the striking game, such as boxing, there are certain factors that you have to take into consideration. Physical attributes. Size, height, weight, age, reach. These are all factors here. The better the physical specimen, the harder they will fight. Why? Because the chances of a KO punch becomes greater. Next, we need to talk about mindset and focus. A negative or nervous mindset may affect your focus and will make you more likely to make a mistake and make you less willing to take risks. If standing toe to toe with somebody, man, you need to take risks if you want to win. Because every time you throw a punch, you're vulnerable to getting punched too. And of course, reaction speed. This slows down with age. The longer you are past your prime, the slower your reaction speed will be. And this will lead to not noticing punches in time. Take a look at some of the best boxers. They learn how to defend themselves using their shoulders. Why is this so good? Because it gives you a greater ability to defend punches. You have more time to react and to defend. The thing is, the primary skills that we develop in boxing is seeing and reacting. And we want to further evolve this into reading and creating predictable responses. With the primary skills in mind, it's easy to see why it's easy to make just one mistake and lose everything. Now don't get me wrong, my money will always be on the better, more experienced fighter, obviously. But flukes happen, and sometimes those who we consider less skillful may actually surprise us. So how does this all apply to Paul versus Woodley? Let's take a look at Jake. He has the reach and height advantage. And there's no denying the power in that right hand of his. That alone can make a fight difficult. Well, of course it depends on who's boxing, right? But what nobody is really talking about or mentioning is that Jake has been training with a professional coach for over three years. And he's just focusing on boxing. So all his tools that he has developed is just boxing specific. It may not be the most technical just as of yet. But, he is driven, focused, and he is improving along the way. 
You may not like him, but you have to give credit where credit's due. But if he does want to prove something, in the sport of boxing, he needs to fight a boxer. He needs to fight a boxer of similar record. Now let's look at Woodley. He has more fight experience, but he was coming off of a losing streak. So this may play negatively with his confidence. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. And that will have a direct impact on his focus. Which led him to taking less risks and getting into the pocket. With Paul having the reach advantage, no wonder why, you know, he was on the losing end. With Paul having the reach advantage, he has to get on the inside. Woodley is getting older. And he could be moving past his prime. This varies with different boxers with their age. It really depends on the athlete. But with boxing, moving past your prime, you're losing your reaction speed. Woodley is an MMA fighter. So now restricting him to Queensberry boxing rules, he doesn't have access to all his tools, of course. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. When you train in so many areas of combat, you are guaranteed to make mistakes or statistically more likely to make mistakes when you make the transition over to a different combat sport. However, that does not mean that there is not a chance for that transition to be successful. It really does depend on the athlete involved. Statistically, we can assume that it won't be. It just goes to show you what kind of beast Anderson Silva really is. But when you train in MMA, the possibility that, you know, when somebody does a level change even, you will react in a certain way, which may be suited better for MMA and not necessarily for boxing. Or something doesn't click and you have a panic response. So let's get to the pro move of Jake Paul. There was a bit of a conspiracy theory that the twist of the wrist was a signal to take a dive. Now that twist of the hand could have just been a habit ready to load for the overhand. Twist of the wrist will help protect your hand for the punch. And when it comes down to sparring and you're trying to pick shots, you know, you might develop these habits along the way. So now it becomes second nature. And these habits can be weaknesses over time. So if you think it was a signal to take a dive, you were sadly mistaken. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. I wish it was a signal to take a dive myself, to be quite honest. But, you know, Paul dropped the right to make it look like he was going for the body. Woodley dropped his guard, standing a bit upright. Now, in that moment, he probably thought, oh, protect the body. Looking down at the punch. Paul swung for the head, and Woodley didn't see it coming. And as we all know, the shot that you don't see coming hurts you the most. As stated earlier, Paul dropped the hand, making it look like a body shot. Woodley dropped his guard, looking down at the punch, and Paul came up over, and Woodley obviously missed it. The fight was sloppy throughout, but in this instance, Paul made a absolute pro move. Because now, I will snatch every motherfucker birthday. He was calm, he thought it through, and he took the risk. And Woodley made that one mistake that cost him the fight. And he's the more experienced fighter. This does happen. Remember the fluke between Buster Douglas and Mike Tyson? So what do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section down below. And if you enjoyed this video, please slap that like and subscribe button. It helps me greatly. And the help can help me start a cult. So until next time. Have a great rest of your day and look after yourself and take care.